Welcome to another day in the Rove. This is the Crypto Shakes podcast. I'm here, Anas Burton, with my yo, main man. Yo, yo, it's the Crypto Shakes in the house. This is... Well, Anas Burton here. We got Dan Osh. <laughs> How's it going? How's everybody feeling? It's good. It's good. It's a good day. Sun is shining, 50 degrees outside. You know, actually, I just had my vaccine yesterday, and I was thinking I was going to be a little bit dead for this, yeah. th our little chat today, but I'm actually feeling full of energy. Yeah, I was and, and you know why I'm feeling full of energy? No. Because we're going to talk about Ethereum. Yeah, and you know what? I was planning to slap you around a few times, <laughs> but <laughs> luckily, luckily, you're not down with the jab, so… Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the jab went… With, with, is, I'm, I'm a bit sore down here, but you know what? I think I'll survive. Yeah. This is the Crypto Shakes. This is the leading podcast in Dubai and the UAE where you, regardless of your skill level, will learn everything from cryptocurrencies to blockchain technologies. But back to Ethereum. Today's a great episode because Ethereum is one of the most exciting projects in the crypto space right now. Well, it has been for a long time. But it, it, it continues to be one of the most innovative places where uh, we're seeing a lot of disruption mm -hmm. of the existing financial system. And we're seeing, I think for the first time, well, not, I'm not, not necessarily the first time, but for, we're finally seeing a real value proposition with crypto. If Bitcoin was the future, this is the future of the future. I guess that's one way of putting it. <laughs> yes, the future of the future. But let's start by talking a little bit about what Ethereum is, because uh, a lot of new listeners who come in, um, they know about Bitcoin. And I've always thought, you know, Bitcoin is kind of like the Napster that will, that there's, there's going to be something more interesting than Bitcoin, because the technology behind Bitcoin is actually a little bit outdated right now. Yeah. It's, a great, it's a great store of value. We talked about this in our last episode. But we, we, Bitcoin doesn't solve some of the key problems in our financial system today. Um, and Ethereum, which was brought in in 2015, 15, was it 15? By Vitalik Buterin, a genius. Uh, he was 17 at the time. He's now, crazy. You know, he's now a billionaire at the age of, <laughs> I think, 27. It makes me feel incredibly uh, useless as a human being. <laughs> but I, I, I think we can look to him as an inspiration because some people think he's actually an alien. Um, when, 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 you, when you speak to him, he's kind of on another level of uh, sort of mental capacity. I heard someone call him a walking brain. A walking brain, exactly. If, if you could just plug your brain. I just want to, like, if I, in the future, if we could, like, just get our brain to plug into someone else's brain and just download his knowledge, that'd be the dream for me. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he, he is a genius. And the reason why, you know, he's obviously a genius is because he built the Ethereum platform. So let's talk about Ethereum. What is Ethereum? Why do we believe this is going to be the future of blockchain technologies, cryptocurrencies, etc.? Exactly. So Anas... I think it's great to always start with a little bit of a story. Mm -hmm. And my story with Ethereum, I kind of touched on it before when I, um, uh, in, my, in the first episode, uh, Ethereum was what actually got me into crypto. I wasn't really sold on Bitcoin because I just saw it as this, initially, just this asset that was being bought and then sold. And that, 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 that to me doesn't really provide a, uh, a real use case necessarily. It does have its store of value proposition, but I always think about something that Warren Buffett kind of said when he buys an asset. When you're buying a, a stock, all right, when you buy a stock, why do you buy it? Well, you buy it because the stock represents the assets that that company has, its liabilities, its IP, its uh, products, all kinds of like Apple. Why do you buy Apple stock? Well, it has a number of things behind it. it has its, its factories, it has its iPhone, it has its uh, intellectual property. Mm -hmm. All of these things make Apple stock worth a buy for, some, for many, right? Yeah. If you apply this analysis to Bitcoin, it becomes a bit problematic. It's not the same kind of analysis because uh, Bitcoin doesn't have an ecosystem or it doesn't, it's not a company. It's not backed by... Uh, it doesn't have assets and liabilities and products. 
But now when you take this analysis and you bring it to Ethereum, you can kind of go down this, you, you can see something different here. Why? Because Ethereum is not just a asset that you buy and sell, mm -hmm. right? In many ways, it's a world computer. It's a platform. It's a platform. You can build so-called dApps on it, decentralized applications. applications, right? And this is what was really quite fascinating when I kind of explored it. And also, well, this is enabled by smart contracts. Mm. Kind of the thing for me, being a lawyer, I saw this and I thought, this could make me jobless one day. It, you know, not just in, 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 in law and, and, and making lawyers jobless, it's going to make a lot of people jobless, but it's also going to create a lot new, of new jobs. Yeah. I, I think that, that's not the wrong way to think about it. <laughs> what, what, what we see, I think jobless is not the right word. What we're trying to say is it's disruption of an existing centralized system, which might mean that old jobs might have to be re-engineered. Mm. Think about the horse and the car. There were people who used to uh, rear horses, etc., right? But then the car came, and now we needed a whole lot, a whole set of new engineers who could build automobiles at scale. We needed roads. We needed all kinds of new things to facilitate this. Yeah. It's the same thing with Ethereum. So let's talk about the, the the infrastructure. The infrastructure, but I think before that, it's good. A lot of people have heard about Bitcoin. You know, they they know that Bitcoin is a store of value. Uh, just this week, we heard that El Salvador has uh, made Bitcoin a legal tender. What, so what does that mean? That means that Bitcoin is now officially, if you go on Wikipedia and check, Bitcoin, together with the US dollar, is officially El Salvador's legal currency. tender. It's, it's incredibly it, it's exciting It's a national news. currency. It's, it's, crazy. Yeah, it's and huge news. It's huge news for the, for the whole crypto industry. And it's very interesting what's happening there. Now, Bitcoin is mainly used for payments. Well, I wouldn't say that. I disagree with that. It, it, it's used, it's, people want it to be used for payments, but... The it's, adoption of payments hasn't really taken off. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, more a store of value. It's a store of kind value. Kind of like digital gold. Correct. It can be used as a means of payment. It's a store of value. The difference between, the main difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum is that Bitcoin, the, progr the programmability on Bitcoin is very limited. Yeah. If you're a developer, you want to create, if you want to add value, create an application on a decentralized platform, you can't really do it on Bitcoin. No. So what did Vitalik do? He created this amazing platform uh, with Ethereum where he allows people to create their own smart contracts, their own decentralized applications. And uh, I mean, you as a lawyer have probably an, experienced it already in, in some industries where contracts are going to replace well, yeah, exactly. Where smart contracts could, in many ways, replace kind of traditional contracts. But before we get there, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about what you said. Because this is a fundamental way for, 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 for people who are looking into Ethereum. Imagine you've got the Apple Store, right? And you can build any kind of software on iOS, mm. um, using iOS kind of uh, software to, to build uh, any app like WhatsApp, Uber, all kinds of these things. Without, think about how many of our apps today are enabled by the Apple Store. Exactly. Okay? But there's one fundamental issue with the Apple Store. It is a centralized place, right? What, that, what I mean by that, if you submit your application on the app, Apple Store, right, you, um, you have to comply with Apple's rules. If you don't comply with it, they can effectively prevent Shut you from mind. being listed. They can even take your... App. I actually worked for a company where we had this problem. Um, we had listed this app on there, but Apple didn't like it at some point, and they just took us off. It was horrible because it mm. completely destroyed the ability for our business to work, and it crippled us. And we had to, um, we had to basically beg Apple to let us come back. Yeah. I don't agree with this kind of world. In the crypto world, we call this a walled garden. It's, you, you have to get around, you have to get into this, beyond this wall to participate. What is Ethereum doing? Ethereum changes this because people can now build an application on the Ethereum kind of blockchain without really needing anyone's approval. There's no censorship. There's no authority in the middle. 
that's going to tell you this is not possible. You can create any application on, in a decentralized manner completely on the blockchain. It's really exciting. Yeah. And, and this is where I think we will see huge growth for businesses. Think about right now we have Uber, we have all these apps on the Apple Store, on the Google Play, etc. We haven't seen what apps might come out of the Ethereum ecosystem that could completely change our lives. And I think we should talk about some of these yeah. because this has, I'm not going to lie, Ethereum has changed my life. So what happened, I mean, to make it easy for people to understand, the, the main difference between an application on the Ethereum platform versus uh, an application in, in real life is that you're cutting out the middleman. This is complete peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, it is a little bit like share, sharing, sharing music on um, Kazaa or, or Napster. Yeah, there's a peer-to-peer -peer aspect there, to it. There's, there's no one in the middle. Like with music today, you have Spotify, who is in the middle charging the, the artists for their uh, uh, part of their royalties is going to Spotify. But in a decentralized platform, artists can create their own music and people can buy it without a middleman. Correct. And there are platforms now being built. So these platforms that are being built kind of removes the middleman and they allow you as an artist music artist uh, an art uh, yeah if you're yeah, a paint if you're a painter a creator a creator anything. or if if, if 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 you want to offer financial services it completes the cut completely cuts off the middleman yeah but let's talk about that and so people can understand that in in a more cemented way so let's start with a, a story here. I used to, I had this bank. Well, I still bank with them, but I really, you can probably tell I'm not the biggest fan of banks. What happened once was I had all this money there. You know, it was my savings, okay? And one day I get this call from the bank and they tell me, listen, um, we're putting a hold on your account. I don't know why. Oh, actually, I know why. It's because I sent some money to my dad and my dad's based in Taiwan, all right? And they were like, this is a suspicious transaction. Um, even though my last name matches with my dad, it's weird. It wasn't even that much money, but they, they basically put a hold on my account and they called me. Okay. And they had a two hour discussion with me. They asked me where I was from, where I get my money. They also asked me details of my salary. Where did I get this salary? How long have I been working at X place? Why am I based in Dubai. Why did I move out of London? All kinds of really questions that made me feel really uncomfortable because it's my personal information. Why should I share this with a third party bank? But of course, in my position, I was a little bit wary in that I couldn't say, oh, I'm not going to tell you anything because they have my money, right? And it's a sort of a fight or flight kind of mode that you enter when your bank calls you because you don't want to lose your life savings that you've had in that account. This was one of the key things for me that made me realize there has to be a way to, to not have this kind of invasive kind of issue with banking. And, 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 now, let me get into why Ethereum changes this. Mm. So after this moment, I, I started exploring um, the, the decentralized finance space. So we just talked about how Ethereum creates apps on, you can create a decentralized app on the Ethereum blockchain. So I discovered Aave, I discovered Compound. Now these are all apps developed by incredible engineers on the Ethereum blockchain. And what they do is they use smart contracts. A smart contract is effectively a contract that executes automatically based on a bunch of code. Mm -hmm. you, it, it has a bunch of rules. If, if X if you put X something into there, it has to deliver a Y result. It's like an Excel if and then formula. If this happens, then this has to be executed. Precisely. I started banking on DeFi. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you think about a bank, what does a bank really do? You give people money. They steal your money. Okay. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. Maybe his opinion. I, I don't personally think banks steal your money. But I do think they rob you of a lot of the potential values and earnings and freedom that you could potentially have. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I started doing was I started moving my money into the DeFi protocols. 
um, like Aave, Lend, et cetera. What does it do? Well, a bank, a bank takes money and, and what it does is it loans it out to other people mm -hmm. for interest. Exactly. And, and they're meant to pay you some of that interest, right? Every month you're meant to look at that and say, oh, I got, you know, X number of... But the thing is, that has, that has, we've reached a point in the world now where we have close to negative interest rates. <clears throat> so that happened to me, actually. I had money in a euro account and I was checking my bank statement and I saw that the bank has charged me a negative interest rate. They have taken money from me, money that they are investing. So instead of paying me interest rate, I have to pay them to keep my money. Unbelievable. So I, I, I just, okay, that's criminal. I literally wanted to go into the bank and take their, take their laptop <laughs> or the keyboard and smack them all over their <laughs> face. <laughs> okay. That's what I wanted to do. So instead of doing that, I went onto my online bank, I withdrew all my money and I put it straight into crypto. <laughs> I'm glad because now you're not in prison and <laughs> you're here having a chat about Ethereum on this podcast because otherwise it could have gone real south there. Yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> well, actually, you can probably defend yourself since you're an ex-martial artist and all that kind of thing. <laughs> People don't know this, but this guy used to be a champ in Sweden. But anyway, we're digressing. Um, back to the point. Um, what, what, so... This is a great, great part where you, you were just telling me about how charging negative interest rates has affected you. Imagine you could loan your money on in a decentralized way to someone. So someone who, let's, let's, let's take an example between you and me. I could go on Aave right now, put my money in this smart contract. The smart contract basically has a bunch of code in there that says, if so some- It's like a contract between, let's say- let's you, say you, you and me, yeah, yeah, we want to participate in this. I put my money in, that, in there, you are a borrower, I'm a lender, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like how a bank works, okay? Exactly. I put my money on Aave or Compound or any another, there are loads of platforms that do this. And you can now borrow from me directly. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay me an interest rate on that. Which is actually, in the decentralized world, the interest rates are usually very reasonable. Very, very reasonable compared to the banks. If you want to get a, if you want to get a loan for your house, if you want to get a loan for your car, at least here in Dubai, you would be paying, you know, at least three to four or five percent and upwards. Yeah, uh, and it's and it's very difficult to get a loan. They they will they, they will, will they will check oh, your salary. They oh will man. check your references. They you know they they will basically. Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff. Like a lot of people try to get loans using their houses. You have a house, and you might want to do what's called an equity release. Let's say you have a. Uh, a, a house worth $100,000 and you try to release some of that equity as collateral. But they don't always allow you to take out that much. They maybe might allow you to take out 20, 30% of that. But it, in crypto, you can have varying levels of, of collateral. And, and that's the, be the beautiful part of it. Um, and, and the security comes from what's called over collateralization. So you might, so somebody might say, oh, but I don't trust this platform. You know, I don't trust that they, it, they, they could collapse if the, 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 the program could lead to a hack. Mm -hmm. Well, that's definitely true. The, 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 I think an important part of smart contracts is we have to ensure audits take place. And that, and that does happen. There are a lot of auditing companies that, that do that. But the key point I was trying to say is when you want to take out a loan, you actually have to put up 50% more. So let's say you want to take out a loan for fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, okay, you actually need to put a hundred thousand dollars onto the Ave platform, and that might seem like a lot, but that is to ensure me as the borrower. I mean, the, sorry, the as the lender, I have security. Correct. If if what happens if the crypto prices collapse or something goes wrong, and I, I can fifty, I can always be kept whole yeah. in that way. So I've been banking this way for the for the past. Uh, year and a half now and it's been i'm not gonna lie it's been incredible so this is just one of the examples of how the ethereum blockchain is enabling companies businesses industries to cut out the middlemen uh, for example in a bank if a bank is going to pay you interest rate first they're going to deduct all of their costs so cost of staff cost of rent cost of whatever they have to pay and that of course impacts the interest rates very negatively in, yeah. in terms of how you as a you cannot you can, you can, well it's not just and, that. And, and the thing is now now you can't even lend out money through a bank yeah. now you're becoming your own bank now someone sitting in Africa with access to the phone can 
set up a node and become their own bank. They can lend out $50 and make money. This discussion, by the way, is really, we're, we're kind of going into the, the decentralized finance kind of space. Um, Ethereum kind of enables that. And this goes back to my initial point about what I was with, with, with Warren Buffett. When you buy Ethereum, you are not just buying a coin that has a pump price based yeah. on whatever. The reason why when we were buying Ethereum back in when it was $80 and now it's 2,500, right? Mm -hmm. it's huge, a huge jump in, in pricing. The reason why we've seen that pump is because Ethereum now represents more than just um, the, the, the purchase price. It represents the growth of um, all these platforms on there. So the, we were just talking about lending, right? There's, there's the lending platforms have built on there. The different types of yielding pr protocols. And I want to talk about this later on because it, lending your money on Ethereum is not the only way to make money. You can make 10% on, on Ethereum mm -hmm. lending your money out, but you can also see some crazy gains close to 100, 200, 300% through these automated market makers. We can talk about that later yeah, on. And, 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 this is a more high risk kind of, um, kind of area. But, the, but what I'm trying to sell here, not sell, but what I'm trying to, to, to explain is Ethereum represents an, a buy on a future decentralized world. Right. And this applies to art, as we discussed. It probably is going to happen to e, you know, eSports e, e in the future. I believe that people are going to play, play from their homes, and they're not going to have to sign up to these gaming companies. There's going to be decentralized games. There's going to be decentralized Entertainment. There's going yeah, to, every, yeah. a lot of a lot of industries are going to be completely revolutionized by becoming decentralized, cutting out the middleman. What you're talking about is called the creator economy. Nowadays, what's really inspiring, I think, for everybody is that anybody can become a creator and participate in monetizing their creations or their creative abilities. It wasn't very easy to do this before because you had to create something and go through a middleman. Let's, yeah, like, let's, let's, go, like art. let's go to the art because that's, that's a perfect example. We know a bunch of NFT artists mm -hmm. and we've met many of them who've sold pieces for upwards of $100,000. Well, we, well uh, if you look at Sasha Jaffrey, who just recently sold an art piece here in Dubai for was it, $62 million? Yeah, well, that, that was for charity. But still, he, he, sells, still, he sells great work anyway. And it didn't have to go through an art dealer. This is the thing, when you sell art normally, or if you're a photographer or any kind of creator, you normally need to put it on some kind of, like let's say if you're an artist, on Christie's. And Christie's takes a cut of whatever you sell, right? But now imagine you can do your, you can create your art, mint it on the Ethereum blockchain, right? And you can do two other things. You can, um, you can earn royalties when people use that art piece. They don't necessarily wanna buy it. They just wanna maybe use it in, a, in Whatever for whatever reason, or they can actually buy it and sell it for 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 without you needing anybody in between yeah. to take some of, to 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 to, to, to do the marketing for you. So so I, I think that that's the really bullish thing I see with Ethereum. yeah. Well, for example, when we when we when we launch our uh, rap album. Oh yeah, because <laughs> this guy knows how to drop a a couple beats and he can spit those bars. Oh well, we can try. Uh, but when we when we actually do launch our rap album, if we sell that rap album as an NFT, whoever sells that after us, we're gonna still receive royalties on those sales. So every transaction we're gonna get ten percent of whatever we decide, and no and no one's gonna ever say that guys, this is not you are not the real owners because this will all be proved on the blockchain. Yeah. Just before we wrap this up, I think we have to talk about we one wrap more it thing. up. Now we got to talk about one more thing, which is uh, Ethereum gas fees. Now this is something. This is a necessary kind of uh, payment that you got to make. And think about it this way: you're, you're imagine that the Ethereum blockchain is like a train, all right. And on this train, there's so many different things. People are building things on this train. You've got, like I said, the lending stuff that's happening. There's a party in there. But to get on this train and to and to play around in there, you kind of have to pay some fees to do that. And the reason why that's the case is because the fees is what ensures that that platform stays secure. Because we talked on the, we touched on this briefly before, it's but like a train ticket. Yeah, it's like a train ticket, and you you pay these fees so that 
the overall uh, trend keeps on moving forward. Yeah, it's the only way to ensure that the if we didn't have this, we'd we have to go back to a centralized system. It's the only way we can keep a a decentralized system alive. The fees fund effectively this decentralized system. So. I, I, Essentially, all the transactions that are happening on this on this blockchain requires computational power. Now, in order to to help that system uh, continue, people are incentivized. And when you're buying Ethereum, you're not actually buying Ethereum. You're buying Ether. Ether is the cryptocurrency that is on top of the Ethereum blockchain, and it's the Ether that people get incentivized with gas is just you know a pricing mechanism to decide how much you this deserve to get paid because you help this blockchain be be fueled yeah it, well it, it's a payment to the miners who keep the 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 blockchain Correct. secure but we don't have to go too much in detail on that. i think i think um the key things about what why i think ethereum is very exciting and why people should be interested is like we said it is a um, it's, it, it's a call option on a future where lawyers, bankers, and other kinds of middlemen are no longer the key holders of your life. You can, you as a creator, can create things and monetize it yourself without these middlemen taking money away from you. And I, I, I I'm, I'm really excited about this because I used to be a photographer. I, I do a lot of, I, I, like you, you're, you're, we've done a bit of music and for fun. I know a bunch of musicians. It, it is so exciting for these groups of people to be able to find a way to monetize their income and their, 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 what, what, what they create. And these are just some, some of the industries that are being affected by Ethereum and, and the decentralized platforms. And the number of new interesting things, projects that are being developed is insane. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we are convinced that Ethereum is part of the future that we see unfolding right now. And a lot of people aren't aware of it. A lot of people are going to be left behind. A lot of people that are in traditional finance have no idea. No idea this is even happening. This exactly. is happening in the background. Yeah. And it's, you know, usually before a change becomes sudden, it's gradual. It's always gradual before yeah. it becomes sudden. But if you miss it out now, you're gonna completely yeah. get get. Uh, it's like when when Maradona dribbled around all the <laughs> English players and, and scored. This is a little bit a little bit the same thing happening. Yeah, right. I think we we should wrap this up now. I mean, we've been we've been talking for a while, and um, I just want to say, firstly, we are not financial advisors. We like to have fun talking about crypto. We love crypto, but we are just. Two guys who love crypto sharing our thoughts on it. This is purely for education and potentially entertainment purposes. <laughs> um, we're going to, I think what's exciting is we have a number of NFT artists down the line who will be on this podcast based here in the Middle East. We have people who are building on the Ethereum blockchain and we can put more flesh on the bones talking with these guys about how they are changing this financial system through the project that they're building. Very excited about that down the line. It's super cool. Like Dubai is the melting pot for blockchain to, uh, in crypto right now. There's so many cool people in that space, and we're going to have a lot of them on this show. So, guys, stay tuned. A lot of good things coming. And next time, uh, Shilan is over there wanting me to rap. Next time, we might do a rap for you. Not this time. It's not. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a freestyler like Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Right, it was care. a pleasure. See ya. Take care. Bye.